the second thing is the practice. So that's the basic question I will try to show to you. And uh, well, despite of the fact that it's just a question, it shall take me quite long to try to give you a lot of arguments in order to support this basic uh, point I want to make. Uh, well, first of all, my apologies to the translators. Uh, uh, I, I'm in Spaniard, and, and, and that's quite difficult for me to speak in a, in a slow pace because I try to get enthusiastic on this. Uh, I try to make my best, life, but, but for, uh, uh, from, from that side, uh, uh, big, big apologies. So, uh, but first of all, uh, I'm here today on, 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 on behalf of COES. What COES is? Maybe, well, most of you, of course, here. Yeah. Gabriel and, and, and a lot of guys sitting in the, uh, around the table are, are perfectly aware of what COES is, but it's maybe important uh, for most of you to know that uh, it's a European organization, that it's representing uh, 25 countries uh, uh, from uh, 19 European Union member states, of course, including uh, Romania for almost a decade, uh, and also my whole country, Spain. Uh, but also we have uh, uh, a wider vision of Europe. I mean, Croatia is there included, that's a mistake, but Bosnia, Macedonia, Norway, Serbia, Switzerland and Turkey are not uh, European Union uh, countries. So globally we are uh, more or less 20, 20, 27 countries at, at, at this moment. And uh, what does uh, COES uh, represent? Uh, so, <laughs> some basic figures. We are not a small industry now. Uh, there are uh, more than 40,000 uh, private security companies working at the uh, European level. We represent more than 2 million private security guards. That's quite something. That there is a, a, a strong contribution our people can make to the public security when we are more than 2 million private security guards. And uh, from a pure uh, economic perspective, important for you to know that at European level, uh, uh, the turnover of our industry amounts for 34 uh, billion euros. Uh, just to give you an example, in Spain we estimate that we represent almost 0.4% of the national GDP uh, in Spain. That's quite something. And uh, well, these are the figures. Uh, but uh, which is the vision of the, of the organization I'm today representing. So uh, we tend uh, all the members, including the Romanian uh, uh, members, to be the European reference uh, for the private security services. That's basic. Okay. To be a reference. But to be a reference for what? And that's when we enter for the first time today in the, the, basic, the basic item of, of services of high quality and professionalism. We were trying to avoid to be part of the European Directive on Services, not to create not to create artificial barriers, but just to promote an upwards strategy because quality is at the heart of our industry. Not paying the taxes out of our industry. And of course, if we have added requirements, we get an added legitimacy. And that's important for the state. Because if we have an added legitimacy, we can get a greater role in the society. There are new spaces, new functions, new roles we can play. And if we play this new role, we can have an added contribution to the public security. And that's the important thing. So that's a sort of virtuous circle. We should be requested more. We have to be more professional. We have to provide more quality services. This leads to an added legitimacy. And this leads to a benefit for the whole security system, since the whole security system can only be based on public and private security. Well, so far, maybe, I don't know, 90% of those guys sitting around the table could agree on this. That's fantastic. But then, let's read this. And at the same time, can private security services be awarded just based on price considerations. And believe me, that's the reality in Brasov, in Bucharest, in Timisoara, in Madrid, in Barcelona, in Brussels, elsewhere. That's contradictory. On one side, 
we are part of the whole security system. On one side, we are requesting more. On one side, we are asked to have greater quality. And on the other side, we are procured just based on price. The one that is offering a lower price is getting the contract. My God, this must come to an end. And there is a role that must be played by us, like providers, by the trade unions, if they duly represent the interests of the employees, by the national authorities, by creating a legal framework that prevents or preserves this basic principle, and of course by the users. But the users have to be convinced on this, and we have to explain how they can reach this. Okay, let's turn now to the European uh, framework. Gabriel Dion were mentioning this. So Europe, I mean, the, we were talking about our, our industry, new industry, changes, changing environment, new realities, new goals, technology. But okay, we also live in a, in, in, in a global environment, a European environment, and Europe has been in crisis, that's a reality. It's been in all over Europe, it's been a heavy crisis in my country, as you perfectly know. It's also been in your country. I'm happy yesterday when Gabriel told me that you were already growing at a pace of 4% in your GDP. The same applies to Spain. Okay, so step by step we are living this, this crisis. But the reality is that Europe has been in a crisis, in an economic crisis, but also in an ideological crisis. We are fighting in a global world. We have to fight against Americans, against China, and that's why Europe 2020 strategy advocated for a smart, sustainable, and inclusive growth. We need to grow, of course. We need to grow. But this growth must be made, as is clearly stated there, in a smart, sustainable, and inclusive way. And that's why the European Commission, five years ago, entered into a revision into modifying, into amending several rules. And that's why it came this update of the European Public Procurement Directives. And as you see, reaching the, 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 the point that brings us to the table. So, new goals at global world, new goals of the European Commission, concrete changes, and changes in the European Public Procurement, in deciding how we procure our services. Right? So then, they began the process of adopting this new directive. It began, as I'm saying, four years ago, uh, yeah, uh, 2011. Uh, we were intensively involved at the European level in trying to advocate for those things that were interesting for our industry from the private security perspective. And finally, it was adopted uh, in February uh, 2014, the new directive, the uh, updated directive uh, on, on public procurement. I could be talking about this directive for, 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 for hours. I mean, Gabriel has suffered that uh, several times. Today, I would just want to make two concrete references. First, this one, that there are no major changes in the tendering process structure. That it remains a basic structure of exclusion criteria. There are criteria to put out, automatically out from the tendering process, those companies that should never be part of this, of, 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 of this process. <coughs> Not paying taxes, in law, bankruptcy, money laundering, or, uh, several, several criteria. Then selection criteria. Once you have excluded some guys, which are the guys that should be considered, their offers should be considered in order to choose the best one, and then awarding criteria. <clears throat> and it's what the directive says, is selection of company based on the best quality price rating. Second time, I'm bringing the idea of quality. I brought it at the first time with the coest vision of Europe. Second time, here, in the directive. The selection of company should not just be based on price, but on a base of a radio quality price. And then, second idea, first is, was this one, no major changes in the tendering process structure. But second one, yes, of course there are changes. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be idiot to say that there is a new directive. It would be just, just be a 
replication or, or just uh, coming back to the same principles that were there. As I say, it's a very complicated directive with hundreds of pages. And uh, from the credit security uh, per, uh, perspective, we have just focus on three main messages. And these messages are very important for you because these are messages to be passed to the, your national legislator. Because as Ion was saying, there is a directive, and as a consequence of the directive, there must be a Romanian new act on public procurement. So this is the time to fight for that. I'm fighting in Spain, and uh, sometimes I'm successful, but in some cases I'm not successful. But I know the messages I have to launch. And these are very simple but very basic messages that are important ones from our perspective. First is the respect of collective agreements. I know the situation in Romania, that that's slightly special because of the requirements of legitimacy to have a collective agreement. But from the European perspective, and I guess it should be the case from the Romanian perspective, to have a legally binding collective agreement is a basic thing in order to fight for a minimum in the respect of the public procurement procedures. So, the directive has introduce a very important principle in Article 82, and it's the fact that labor law, and in particular collective agreements, should be, must be respected in the whole public procurement procedure, when launching the tender, when awarding the contract, and when executing the contract. Throughout the whole process, collective agreements must be respected. And as a consequence, if one guy is coming with a tender, which is 20, 30, or 40 percent lower than what the labor law, or alternatively, the collective agreement is foreseen, should be automatically excluded. That's an obligation from the directive. It's not something to be adopted freely by the Romanian authorities. That's something that must be included in the public procurement in Romania. And if it's not included, the, public, the Romanian public procurement is against European law. That is a concrete thing to be look at and to fight for. And third is to cancel the contracts which do not respect the provisions of the collective uh, agreements. I mean, if one company has been awarded a contract on the basis of one price and it's later not respecting the price that is contained, should be contained in their own collective agreement or the labor law, this company must be absolutely uh, excluded and the contract should be automatically Cancer. So, three messages regarding the first item. Respect of collective agreements and in global uh, scale, respect of labor law. Second, this should never appear here. It's, 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 uh, it's unbelievable that still in 2015 we are mentioning this. But yes, that's a reality in Romania and that's a reality in Spain. There are guys that are not paying their taxes. And that's a reality. So those guys not paying their taxes out, automatically excluded, because that's unfair competition. That's unfair competition because they are not contributing to the whole society. So to be very serious and to be very strict and to clearly request that those guys not paying the taxes or social security out. And of course to exclude also those that violate their obligations, as I was mentioning in collective agreements, and maybe more important for the users in here uh, to exclude those guys that have shown significant or persistent deficiencies in performance in prior contracts. It's not possible that one guy has been awarded a contract, has been performing that in an absolutely wrong way, and it's later awarded another contract by the same authority or another authority. No way. This is put in the directive. But let's be careful. Before I was saying that there was an obligation for the Romanian legislature. In this case, it's not an obligation. It's an option. It's an option if you are advocating for that. If you are not advocating for that, it, it's not necessary to be included in the Romanian or in the Spanish legislation. That's an alternative for the member state when transposing, when incorporating the directive in the Romanian law. And third point, and that's what links to the guide we are creating, uh, we are presenting, introducing today. It's the principle, the MIT principle. That's a funny word uh, uh, in the acronyms in, 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 in English. 
And that's, that's a nice way to remember it. The most economically advantageous standard. Which means that this is one basic principle in a wording contract. And there are two clear messages. First, that quality, and that's the third time I'm talking about quality, vision of choice, second, the principles of awarding contracts, and third year. Quality must be explicitly mentioned as the main criteria for awarding private security contracts. Of course, coming back to the virtue uh, circle, if we are playing a greater role, if we want to get greater legitimacy, if, you, if we want to contribute more to the public security, of course, our contracts, by giving the necessary consideration to price, of course price must have a, a, a value in the, in the working process, but quality must prevail. And that's why the second message is that member states have the alternative, and again, another message for you, that's a message for the legislators in transposing this directive, is that member states can provide that contracting authorities may not use price only as the sole award criterion. So there is a possibility and there is a way to change your act in uh, uh, going for that principle. So as I was saying at the very beginning of my presentation, this is the theory. Later, Gabriel will enter in the, in the real practical uh, uh, content. But well, we could have stopped down here and to say, okay, nice, new principles, new ideas, new arguments, maybe we are able to convince, but we need to convince the users with a practical instrument, because we say quality, and, and one guy is coming to us and saying, and what quality means? So we have to put quality in concrete terms, in understandable, concrete, and measurable terms, because we are not advocating for subjective eh? We want to remain with objective criteria, but objective quality criteria in awarding uh, a company. And that's why... Yeah, yeah thank you. And, and that's why uh, not only COES, COES is the employer's organization, but you see there, Uniglobal, which is the European Organization of Trade Unions, with the help and with the support of the European Commission, so employers, employees, and authorities involved, we have tried to update the guide that Ian was mentioning, the guide of 99 on selective best value and on buying quality private security services. And that's the guide that you have there in this website. Why to update this guide of 99? Because this was a process that uh, uh, also took place uh, 15 or 16 years ago because of three main arguments. Uh, first, what I have explained to you, new directive, new possibilities, <laughs> so new guide, because the guide must be, must refer, must be fully compatible with this new legal framework. So first argument, new legal framework, new guide. Second, the argument I was using also before, I mean, new role of private security. <laughs> we created this guide in, in 1999 before uh, September 11th. I mean, this, this was a change eh, in the perception of, of private security on the role we were playing. I mean, it's absolutely different what we are making, what we were making before the new, the, the new roles, functions uh, we, are, we are performing now. So, of course, the guide must take this into consideration. I was mentioning the integration of the human element, the technology, integrated services, solutions for providing the services, not just man guards, ours. And the third, of course, uh, that this, is, this was, and this is a guide for the public procurers, but not only for the public procurers. This is a guide that can be perfectly applicable by the private client. And that's our purpose. Not to create a guide for the 28 or 30 percent of the public uh, uh, of the of the public services awarded uh, or the services awarded, awarded according to the public procurement, but also to the 100 percent, including private and public and public uh, uh, services. Uh, 
I will not enter in a very de uh, detailed way on the guide because that's the, the role of, of Gabriel and taking the floor in, 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 in Romanian it's much easier for you to, 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 to understand him. Uh, but yes, before I, I, I finish, there are uh, two free four messages I want to, 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 to share with you. First, well, we are security people and we are used to, uh, to make a risk analysis. So in the guide, we have tried to, to put the benefits, to explain the benefits of using this, this approach, but also to stress the risks that the users have if they don't use this, 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 this model. Which are, what are the risks of choosing lowest price only? Because maybe some of the guys sitting here, they need to explain to, to, the, to, the, to the high staff of their companies why they are spending more in a security company than in another security company. They must have arguments for the highest staff, for basic arguments. If we are choosing lowest price only, there is a compromised performance of the contract. Yes, the guys try to avoid what they have compromised. And at the end, there can be the possibility that at one moment the contract is stopped, and then what you need to make in order to launch a tender again, it costs you more than the, the fact of having spent 2, 3, or 5% more in a normal and qualified company. Second, unfair competition, and that's a responsibility for everybody, for the users and especially for the companies. Third, more important from the public uh, authorities' perspective, the non-compliance with legislation. And we talk about the non-payment of taxes, the non-respect of labor law, undeclared work practices, and yeah, from the administrative law, the non-respect of the private security legislation. You have a strong public uh, uh, security legislation in, in, in Romania, the same applies for, for, for respect. Uh, of course, those guys uh, entering into this strategy no, are, are, are no, no, no respecting this, this. And of course, more important that from the public uh, perspective, uh, without citizens, eh, the citizens' rights are affected when we provide our services. So I raise to the bottom. Less training, number of companies, image of the sector destroyed. So these are risks. We have to consider the consequences of this level of security. Are you providing the same uh, security? Because finally you get a security company because you, you, you consider that there is a risk that must be minimized. So insurance, eh? you, you, you perfectly know the theories. More you spend on, on, on security, less you spend on, on insurance. Technical equipment, of course those companies performing things in the right way can, can provide you with the, with the updated and well maintained, not only to, to provide but maintain the technical equipment you need for your services. Image of the sector and globally the return on, on, on investment. That uh, it, It's not the cost of private security, it's the, the return you get from that. At the end, there is a downward spiral. I was talking about the uh, uh, virtual uh, uh, circle, and, 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 and there is also a downward spiral, but there is a solution. If the public authorities go to the lowest bidder, efforts in quality are destroyed, because the companies do not invest in quality if they are not recognized for the quality they put to the market. Negative public image, employees dissatisfaction, you get people there with no interest, no motivation, and it's absolutely impossible to attract new employees. The solution is best value, not going to come back on the basic ideas. When you think of security, you think of quality, investment, motivation, loyalty, and attractiveness. Two final messages uh, that are also contained in the guide, and since you have them in, in Romanian, well developed, I will not uh, focus too much. Do's and don'ts. Gabriel will explain you which are the concrete quality criteria that can be used uh, in, in, in choosing a, a, public, a private security provider. But there are also some procedural principles that should be taken by public and private uh, authorities when choosing uh, a company. First, again, for the fourth or the fifth time, do abort tenders on the best quality price ratio and be 